Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we're here to finally talk about the new GeForce GTX 1060. No longer a preview, we're allowed to review uh, the graphics card now. What you see in front of me is actually we have three different GTX 1060s. One I'm going to focus on today is the Founders Edition, aka Reference Design, whatever you want to call it, the one that we uh, showed pictures of over a week ago uh, and really in, uh, started the preview with. We also have an EVGA card. You can see it's a small card, single fan design. It's an SC design single six pin power connector on it. We also have a larger, beefier model. This is the MSI uh, Gaming Edition, an eight pin power connector uh, backplate, that type of stuff. Uh, like I said, really gonna focus on the Founders Edition here. This is one we've spent the most time with. These just came in in the last couple of days. So uh, let's, let's talk about what we know about the 1060. Uh, first and foremost, the specifications. We already mentioned these to you in the previous 1060 preview video. 1280 CUDA cores, 80 texture units, 48 ROPs. Uh, 1506 megahertz base clock with a boost clock of 1708 megahertz, so significant clock speed advantage for the 1060 over uh, what the RX 480 is able to do. Uh, eight gigabytes, I'm sorry, six gigabytes of GDDR5 memory running at eight gigahertz, eight gigabits per second on 192 bit memory bus for 192 gigabytes per second of actual memory bandwidth. Uh, there are rumors of a three gigabyte version of this card coming out. NVIDIA won't tell me whether or not that's actually the case. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye out on whether or not they release a three gigabyte version that will be a little bit lower in price. Um, this is a completely new GPU. This is GP106. Uh, it is a 4.4 billion transistor GPU. So quite a bit smaller, 120 watt TDP, a single six pin power connector. Uh, and they do say it is a full implementation of GP106. There's no uh, disabled clusters or CUDA cores or anything like that inside the GPU itself. If you look at the specifications, that's almost kind of almost exactly half of a GTX 1080 in terms of CUDA core count, texture count, although the ROPs are a little bit different because that memory interface was 256 bits. Keep in mind that the GTX 960 had 1024 CUDA cores. So this only has, you know, 20% more or so uh, uh, CUDA cores on it, but because the clock speeds are going from around a gigahertz to over 15, 16, 1700 megahertz, uh, clearly there's going to be a significant performance advantage over that uh, and to the 960. 960 is really not even the same range of performance as the new GTX 1060 actually is. Um, now, pricing is obviously really important. We'd mentioned uh, in our preview story that the Founders Edition was going to be $299 and that the retail cards would be starting around 249. Now, the, the two we have here, this one MSI tells me is going to be $289, and EVGA tells me this one's gonna be $259. Neither of those are $249, as uh, many of you are going to note immediately, uh, but both of these are still overclocked. This is an SC model, this is a super clock version, even though it's a small PCB, it is overclocked out of the box. Uh, we'll go into more detail on these cards and their individual stories, but I wanted you to so see that we had, do have retail versions of uh, 1060 cards ready to be tested, ready to be evaluated, and these will be available on June 19th today, just as uh, the Founders Edition will be. Now, the Founders Edition is a little bit different uh, this time around. NVIDIA is not calling this, not saying that it will run the length of uh, time that the 1060 exists. I consider this more of actual a reference design this time. Um, they call it a virtual launch, meaning that they uh, expected retail cards to be available on day one, uh, and that will definitely be the case. This was a limited run. It will only be sold on NVIDIA.com. Um, so uh, through NVIDIA as an NVIDIA branded product, so you won't see other vendors kind of selling the reference design. So there's some differences here from what we saw with the 1080 and the 1070 for sure. Obviously what's most important here is performance, right? $249 compares very favorably to the eight gigabyte version of the RX 480, which is 239 is its MSRP. Uh, and we really do believe that the eight gigabyte version of the RX 40 will be what you'll see uh, from AMD and Radeon partners going forward. Uh, I think you'll see very little of the four gigabyte variant. Uh, performance of the new 1060 in the kind of reference speed founders edition that we're testing here, none of the overclocked uh, configurations is plus or minus 5% most of the time compared to the GTX 980. So the claims of getting GTX 980 performance in a GTX 1060 uh, for 250 bucks are accurate, right? Uh, our performance metrics in seven different games kind of bear this out. Sometimes it's a little bit faster. Most of the time it's a little bit slower, 
uh, but right up there with the GTX 980. Uh, if you compare it to the 970, you're looking at 20 to 25, sometimes 30% faster than the GTX 970. Um, so clearly the 1060 is the, is the better part there. And like we said, above the 960, it's you know 50% or more, 70% more uh, performance than you get out of a GTX 960. Now, in the family of Pascal parts, which the GTX 1060 is based on, uh, the 1060 is about 25% slower than the 970. So, or I'm sorry, the 1070. So if you look at the performance of the 1080, drop 25, 20% down to the 1070, drop another 20, 25% down to the 1060, and you get to the performance levels that we're looking at for 250 bucks. Um, if you compare it to the RX 480, uh, the newest AMD part based on Polaris, uh, it's kind of, um, they wins most of the time. The 1060 is, is a faster card in my opinion, uh, but it actually is a little bit slower in two games in particular, Hitman and Gears of War, both DX12 titles, uh, both uh, Hitman at least is known to be using asynchronous compute to some kind of degree, right? And in both those instances, um, the 1060 is about 10% slower and it's 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 that that performance delta happens at 2560 by 1440 it's actually closer at 1080p but as we increase the resolution a little bit the uh, rx40 is a little bit faster however if you look at dirt rally fallout 4 gta 5 uh, tomb raider rise of the tomb raider witcher 3 all of these games you're looking at the gtx 1060 being up to 30 something percent faster in a couple of those instances but more so in the 10 to 15 percent range uh, advantage that you see on the 1060 when compared to the RX 480. It is interesting to note that uh, performance at 1080p comparatively is better for the 1060 than at 2560 by 1440, just as we saw before. The, the performance delta, uh, the performance advantage in those titles for the 1060 actually shrinks a little bit when you go to the higher resolution, but it's definitely uh, still there uh, for, for sure. Power consumption wise, this is obviously a uh, topical subject, much more interesting. We went in more in depth than we would normally have done uh, just to double check what the 1060 is doing. It's 120 watt TDP. It does have a single six pin power connector. Uh, it is using between 30 and 40 watts less power in my testing uh, than the RX 480. Um, so if you compare it in uh, Witcher 3 at 1080p, Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, Metro at 4K, you're looking somewhere between 30 and 40 watts less power draw. Uh, and we did run this through Metro at 4K, which was kind of like the stress test that came up when we were doing all the RX 480 testing. Um, through the PCI Express power connection, this card was drawing less than 55 watts through uh, while running Metro 4K. Right? Remember that um, uh, the, the kind of specification limits you to about 66 watts at 5.5 amps. So this is doing 5 amps uh, and just about 55 watts of power draw through it. When we overclocked it, uh, we were able to get just about 5.5 amps. But it never crossed 5.5 amps, but it was pretty much right at it, uh, 63 watts of power draw through it. So this met specifications. We didn't notice any of the same issues we had with the RX 480 at launch uh, for power consumption. Now, uh, a couple of things worth noting here. The GTX 1060 no longer supports SLI. There's no SLI connectors on this card. Uh, it won't support SLI through the PCI Express bus. And in my opinion, this is kind of a, this is a dumb decision on NVIDIA's part. There's no sense in taking away uh, SLI performance from any segment of users um, that it, it would, would ever use it, right? They already kind of shied away from three and four-way, kind of cutting that off with the Pascal parts. Um, and so they kind of redoubled down on two-way SLI and two-way multi-GPU configurations, which is fine and it makes sense. I don't have a, a big problem with that. They claim that their numbers, and they can get a good sense of what how many users are running uh, 1060 class, 960 class GPUs in, in multi-GPU, it is a very low number. That being said, Fine. What are you going to save a dollar by not having the PCI or the uh, SLI connectors on the back of the board? Maybe you save a buck on it. That doesn't seem worth um, the the kind of mind share uh, uh, vendetta or like what what people will think about the product or about the company to lose that. Uh, and the qualification time obviously increases when you throw in the GTX. 1060 multi-GPU configurations, but I can't imagine that it's going to add very much on the software side to development, right? If you can figure out SLI for the 1080, you can figure out SLI for the 1070, then you should be able to figure out SLI for the 1060. And this might have even been a chance for uh, NVIDIA to just use PCI Express. If they were really, if that dollar, two dollars, whatever it was on the, on the SLI connector was really important to them, um, maybe you'd try PCI Express-based stuff. 
Um, but then you run into the, the whole debate of was a SLI bridge ever necessary? And I'm sure they didn't want to go down, down that path. Uh, regardless, whatever the reasoning is, and regardless of how much I disagree with it, the GTX 1060 does not support SLI, uh, so do not expect to buy multiples of these and run SLI. If you get explicit GPU, like in DX12, Ashes of the Singularity, or Rise of the Tomb Raider, you don't need an SLI bridge, right? So you can just, just do it that way, um, but obviously that's going to be a smaller subset of games uh, than we would like. Overclocking on the card was actually pretty impressive. I was able to get to a plus 200 megahertz offset with this card, which did equate to uh, 200 megahertz of additional clock speed while running um, uh, through our Unigen Heaven kind of 10 minutes of let's see what the GPU clocks stabilize at test. Uh, and it's pretty impressive. We're running over two gigahertz on the GP106 GPU. Uh, and it felt like we could have gotten a little bit more out of it had we wanted to spend more time. Kind of jumped up to 225, pretty instantaneous uh, crashing there. Uh, but very impressed with what the Founders Edition card was able to do. And obviously we'll have to test what the MSI or EVGA card able to do if MSI's inclusion of, a, of an 8-pin power connector really makes any difference. I don't think it will. That's not normally how NVIDIA's GPUs and their partner cards overclock uh, in reality. And uh, we only saw temps get up into like the mid, like the low 70s at stock and then the high, high 70s to 80C mark win overclock. So pretty impressive card, pretty impressive GPU, and I expect the partner cards will be just as impressive, if not a little bit more so. So where do we conclude on this? At $249, the GTX 1060 is an awesome video card, and it really makes um, the RX 480 at just $10 less for the 8 gigabyte variant a questionable purchase, to say the least. Right? We're talking um, 10 to 30% more performance in five out of our seven games for NVIDIA's new GTX 1060, and only in a couple of cases, the new Hitman and Gears of War, did we see performance deltas of uh, you know five to ten percent against the GTX 1060. So um, the RX 480 is still out of stock everywhere as I record this, um, and so any potential advantage AMD had with the RX 480 kind of that's over now. Right now, it is a battle that we expected to see. Um, between NVIDIA's GTX 1060 and this kind of mainstream, um, very uh, specifically targeted price point of consumer graphics cards. Uh, and it's going to be a really, really interesting thing. Obviously, this only matters if these cards stay in stock, right? All the issues of the 1080 and the 1070, uh, where stock issues were a problem, and they're still a problem on the GTX 1080. 1070s you can find, but 1080s are still really, really hard to find. Um, if that happens to the 1060, then it won't really matter, right? It's whoever has cards in stock when that person wants to buy cards is really what it will come down to. Um, so I really am a big fan of the GTX 1060 Founders Edition, 299. I wouldn't really worry about it. I'd be much more concerned about these partner cards that we're going to review in the coming days and weeks. So be sure you are subscribed here and keep checking PCPer.com for all the details, including this full review. If you want all the benchmarks and, and data and tables and graphs and everything that goes along with it, uh, we'll have a link to that in the description below. And we will see you very soon with a lot more GPU talk. Thanks. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.